Commerce chief raises concern over China's actions against U.S. firms. Chinese salvage ship loots British World War II battleship burial sites for steel. Texas bill seeking to ban Chinese from buying up property dies in legislature. House committee chair seeks detail about Biden's executive order on China investment curbs. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo expressed concern about the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP's, recent actions against U.S. firms in China during a key meeting with her Chinese counterpart Wang Wentao in Washington. Raimondo raised the concern on May 25th in the first cabinet-level meeting between Washington and Beijing during the Biden administration. Raimondo spoke about the recent spate of PRC, People's Republic of China, actions taken against U.S. companies operating in the PRC. Pressure from lawmakers mounted in Washington to respond to Beijing's recent targeting of Idaho-based semiconductor maker Micron for so-called national security reasons. After the meeting, the Commerce Department said the two had candid and substantive discussions on issues relating to the U.S.-China commercial relationship, including the overall environment in both countries for trade and investment, and areas for potential cooperation. In its statement, China's Ministry of Commerce described the meeting as candid and constructive, highlighting Wang's expression of concerns to Raimondo regarding U.S. chip policy and export controls. Wang is on his way to attend an Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum in Detroit, where economic coercion and the reshaping of supply chains will be discussed. The Commerce Department under Raimondo has actively taken the lead in restricting exports of chip-making technology to China. In October last year, her department imposed a sweeping export ban to cut off Chinese access to U.S. cutting-edge technology. Last month, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce issued a statement warning of the rising risk of doing business in China, as the CCP has dramatically increased scrutiny of American companies. The chamber said the CCP's move is a matter of serious concern for the investor community. Nicholas Burns, the U.S. ambassador to China, also expressed the same concern, calling Beijing's actions punitive. The CCP's police have raided several U.S. firms operating in China and questioned their employees. These include Mintz Group, an American corporate due diligence firm, and Bain and & Company, a U.S. management consultancy. A Chinese salvage vessel has been found covertly scavenging the burial sites of World War II-era wrecks for scrap metal near the shore of Malaysia. The Chinese ship, identified as the Chuan 68, was spotted digging up the war graves of Britain's HMS Prince of Wales and HMS Repulse, which were sunk by Japanese bombers in 1941. The HMS Prince of Wales was the most advanced warship of the Royal Navy at that time. It was a 35,000-ton vessel protected by 14.7-inch thick armor. The HMS Repulse was an older battle cruiser that weighed 27,600 tons and was covered by a 6-inch belt of thinner armor. According to First Post, HMS Prince of Wales sank with 327 of the 1,612 crew members lost, while the HMS Repulse sank with 513 of its 1,309 crew members drowned. On the other hand, the Chuan 68 is notorious in the region for its illegal activities. The Daily Mail reported that it was already known for rummaging World War II shipwrecks in Singaporean, Cambodian, and Vietnamese waters. Its crew was briefly held on suspicion of looting parts from three Japanese World War II shipwrecks near Usukan, Malaysia in 2017. The Indonesian Navy later tried to stop them from lifting parts of a shipwreck near the Anambas Islands, but the Chuan 68 escaped to international waters. A source told the New Straits Times that Chuan 68 is infamous for its decade-long history of looting activities. The person said, 10 years ago it resembled a dilapidated barge, but it is now fitted with high-technology equipment. They operate mechanically and entirely from the surface of the barge, which is equipped with cranes sporting huge metal claws. The person added that the vessel would hide itself by switching off its GPS and Wi-Fi devices on board. The Chinese vessel was in for the high-quality steel inside the two wartime ships. USNI News said the steel was produced before nuclear weapons and tests, making it valuable for some medical and scientific equipment. 
It could also be used for other things by smelting it. England's Ministry of Defense has condemned the illegal activity. It said in a statement, according to the Daily Mail, where we have evidence of desecration of the wrecks of Royal Navy vessels, we will take appropriate action, including working with regional governments and partners to prevent inappropriate activity at such sites. A land ownership bill that aims at restricting the Chinese from ramping up Texas real estate is not becoming law. Senate Bill 147 is dead, as Speaker Dade Fallen did not schedule a weekend hearing for it, making it impossible to pass before the end of the regular session. Over concerns of important Texas land being taken over by problematic Chinese entities, the legislature seeks to bar all ownerships from governments, businesses, and citizens from nations deemed hostile to the U.S., including North Korea, Iran, Russia, and China. It passed through the Senate on April 26th with bipartisan support. Governor Greg Abbott also declared that he would sign the bill into law if it reached his desk. But the bill faced criticism about discrimination from the Chinese community, who argued that it covered those who fled communist China and were legitimate green card holders. Chinese immigrant Zhen Gang Cheng told WFAA, with a bill like this, you are categorizing this whole group as suspects. The bill was introduced in December as lawmakers were alerted that Chinese real estate mogul Sun Guangxin bought roughly 140,000 acres close to an Air Force base in Valverde County. According to Forbes, Sun was in the People's Liberation Army and fought in the war between China and Vietnam in 1979, becoming a captain. State Senator Lois Kolkhorst has revised the legislation twice. She first ensured that the bill would not impact any legal permanent residents. Then she changed the legislation to cover only the land for agriculture, oil, gas, timber, or mining bought by citizens or businesses from the four countries. Kolkhorst said at the time, The growing ownership of Texas land by some foreign entities is highly disturbing and raises red flags for many Texans. By comparison, as an American, go try to buy land near a Chinese military base and see how it works out for you. Still, criticisms of discrimination prevailed. As the Houston Chronicle reported, State Representative Jean Wu argued, National security is a serious issue, but if we are concerned about the actions of foreign governments, then legislation should only affect foreign governments and their agents. A top U.S. lawmaker requested more information on Biden's proposed executive order relating to U.S. investment restrictions in China, questioning whether the planned restrictions would be effective. Reuters reported that Congressman Patrick McHenry, chair of the House of Representatives Committee on Financial Services, on May 25th sent a letter to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen asking for details about the proposal. In the letter, McHenry wrote, do Treasury and the administration really believe that investment restrictions will be effective this time, particularly against a surplus country that holds $3 trillion in reserves? The Biden administration plans to impose investment restrictions on certain Chinese technology firms to restrict billions of dollars from American firms into sensitive Chinese sectors. Critics in Washington point fingers at American companies, accusing them of transferring capital and valuable expertise to Chinese tech companies, potentially enhancing the military capabilities of the Chinese regime. A tech policy group at Georgetown University reported earlier this year that U.S. investors had poured $40.2 billion into Chinese AI firms from 2015 to 2021, with over 400 transactions. Some noted U.S. investors include chipmakers Intel and Qualcomm. Earlier this month, Yellen said that Washington had long considered imposing more targeted curbs on outbound investment to China and discussed the plan with its G7 allies. The proposed ban will apply to some investments linked to semiconductor production. The measures will likely monitor restrictions imposed by the U.S. last year, which limited exports of American artificial intelligence chips, chip-making tools, and supercomputers to China. The executive order originally planned to be released in the fourth quarter of last year, faced further delays, partly to avoid provoking Beijing ahead of Secretary of State Antony Blinken's planned trip to China in February. However, this visit was postponed due to the Chinese spy balloon incident. 